Good morning, church. Good morning. Anybody anticipating the warmer weather today? Mm -hmm. yes. Sun's out. That's a, that's a plus. And we have heat in here, so that's even better. That's nice. Mm -hmm. So, just want to welcome everyone this morning. And you know what? Sit in the back. Be right back. <laughs> Well, you know, our sermon is today about spending less, so I need to spend less time chitty-chatting with Mark this morning and more time paying attention to what I was doing. I think we might get into a little bit about time today, but we'll see. Um, for our announcements this morning, so Advent began last week. So I, I, just looking outside, it's really still kind of hard to believe it because there's no white stuff on the ground yet. Okay. Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah, everybody's pretty much okay with that, right? So last week we started uh, with what it meant to worship fully. And you know, last week and now throughout the rest of this series, we're going to continue to learn how to substitute consumption with compassion by practicing the four simple but powerful countercultural concepts that we have on the screen. Worshiping fully, spend less, give more, and finally, love all. And last week it was about ultimately... Christmas begins and ends with Jesus. And this week, in spending less, it, how can we free our resources and our time for things that truly matter? Next week, it'll be uh, giving more of our presence through our hands and our words and our time and ultimately our hearts. And then finally, we'll end up with the love all. And, and that includes the poor, the forgotten, the marginalized, the sick, and, and doing it in such a way that makes a difference. And I invite you to join us this Wednesday night as we continue with the Spend Less. Uh, it'll go a little bit more into depth of uh, from the sermon today. So we'll be doing that at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. And then we're going to, and we, I talked about this last week, we have just a, a whole list of things. We're just going to keep busy all through the end of, of the year this year. Next week, uh, we'll be caroling on Saturday, the 10th, and meeting here at 2 o'clock. That way we can all plug in our food and whatnot, and then we'll leave from here, and we'll go out to the different places uh, to carol that uh, Mark, uh, Carla has been working at getting set up for us. So uh, we do appreciate that. And then just wow, two weeks later, candlelight service, Christmas Eve. And I can only anticipate what it will, I mean, I know what it's looked like in our previous spaces, but I can only anticipate with the way that this space looks at night when we just have the, like, the lights around the ceiling on and things like that, how beautiful it will be. And it'll be a, a wonderful uh, evening of worship starting at 11 p.m. that night. There will not be any service the next day, uh, but we won't wait too much longer. Two weeks after that, we will have our next men's breakfast. So. We've decided the first Saturday of the month is our men's group day. And we're going to meet for breakfast again. Um, for those of you that were here, did y'all get full? <laughs> I think that, that's a, a truism there. It, there was plenty of food. There was uh, with the devotional and certainly the ensuing discussion. You know, we met, I mentioned yesterday, iron sharpens iron and... and to have a safe space for men to go and talk and to come together and to really talk honestly about faith and certainly how that faith is playing out in our lives today and how we can truly be better together than apart. So January 7th, 9 a.m. Uh, we'll follow that up at some point on one of the Saturdays. We haven't gotten that so quite sorted yet. We'll have that soon. But God's Not Dead, fourth installment, We the People. And so we're looking forward to that one. And then just a month later, we start season 18 of Orange Track. So lots uh, going on there. And uh, looking forward to that. I, I can't believe it's been 18 years. That's a, a long time to be racing Hot Wheels cars. 
Um, for those of you who are watching online, uh, watch for the links for the videos uh, in the uh, news feed there, and we'll get that out to you so you can worship along with us after the service. As we get ready to hear the sermon that the Lord has given to Pastor Mark today about spending less, let us go to the call to worship, which uh, for this, Mark has chosen Romans 15, 13. And this is what this scripture says. It says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Yeah, I find it interesting. This, this passage ends, it's kind of an end of a section from verse 8 to 13, in which Paul shows us that Christ came to serve the Jewish people as the fulfillment of God's promises to them. But in doing so, this, this brings Jesus in full form to us, in full fashion to us, that he becomes the hope for everyone around the world, and not just the Jewish people. It's a powerful statement of what God can and will do in the heart and mind of every Christian. Now, Mark and I had a hope for the men's group, and that is being fulfilled. And we are enjoying that, and we we look forward to seeing the growth, not just not so you know. And we we'd love to see it grow where we have to worry about buying new more tables for the space, but the spiritual growth is what's important. And now, this is a, this per, verse even in and of itself has been used as a benediction by churches for forever, and it's a prayer where Paul is asking the God of hope, to fill us with all joy and peace in believing in him. And Paul's prayer is that we would simply trust God. It's in trusting God that we have that hope. He's asking that we trust in God that our faith would bring us that joy and that peace and bring it into our hearts. And as we have this joy and peace, Paul is asking that we would abound, not just having that hope for ourselves, but we would abound in it, that it would go out beyond us, that people around us would see us. Yesterday, and yesterday's just full of examples, but yesterday we talked about how people were seeing that hope in us. And it's done through the power of the Holy Spirit. So last week, we spent time understanding what it meant to worship fully. This week, as Pastor Mark prepares to come up here. We're going to hear about how we can spend less. And I would challenge you to not have the preconceived notion that I had when I first saw that title to think money. Put that to the side. Just leave spend less open. Open your minds, open your hearts to hear this message. Father God, as we prepare to hear this message that Pastor Mark has prepared, that you have given to him, these words that will teach us about spending less in so many more ways than we initially see or, or envision when we hear those two words. Father, we thank you for the hope that you give us. Father, we thank you that we can have that unexpected hope, a hope that does bring us comfort, that does bring us peace. Father, this morning we pray a blessing upon Pastor Mark as he comes up here now to give us that message. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, good morning, church. How's everybody doing this morning? Good morning. Ripping and ready to go. We got the sun just shining in the windows here, warmed it up. It was a really rude awakening coming back to Iowa from Florida, where it was 85 degrees every day. And I get outside and I walk out and here's this massive wind blowing and cold and my jacket's packed in my bag and I'm going, oh yeah, welcome back to Iowa. <laughs> but it's great to be back here and uh, this is a great day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Be full of joy and that's what it's about. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And when we talk about that verse... And I know that I, I 
start every message off with that because we're here in a time of worship to rejoice, to rejoice what God has done in our lives, to, to lift it up in joy. That's what it means to rejoice. And as we come into our candle lighting this week for Advent, it is our second week in Advent. Last week was hope and this week is joy. So we, we have a special uh, double dose of joy this week. So if you want to come up and light some candles here, uh, we get to talk about joy and what it means to have joy in our lives. And that opening that I picked uh, for our call to worship this morning from Romans 15, 13. Got it? Maybe. There you go. <laughs> kind of a neat one. Is, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. There's the key. May he fill you with all joy and hope and peace. In believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope and Pastor Terry did an excellent job talking about that in our call to worship this morning and we need to be able to do that we need to be take and in this season of Advent bring our beliefs forward make them known to everybody and went to all the world and make disciples of all people of all nations but in this second Advent uh, week in Advent it's in anticipation of the coming of Christ, and we light a candle each week in our Advent wreath, and the second candle here is a candle of joy. So we have hope, and we have joy that abounds in Christ, and we're looking forward to that. So this morning, we light that second candle, and like Mary, we wait for the Christ child to come. Now, she just got done with this huge, bumpy journey that she took all the way down there when they came to register and so i imagine she really wants to get this over with quick so she's going to have a lot of joy when this happens but we're going to have a lot of joy in the world as well so we celebrate all that god has already done and we say my soul magnifies the lord and my spirit rejoices in god my savior that comes from luke 1 46 and 47. we reflect on the wonder of the precious name of jesus our savior and our Prince of Peace. And next week we're going to talk about peace. Today we have that peace and knowing that Jesus is coming. And it is through him that we are saved. And so when we think about that. And we think about that passage in Romans. That we are filled with all joy and peace in believing. So that by the power of the Holy Spirit we might abound in hope. So in this time of Advent, we're, we're just kind of crashing through the season. And a lot of times it feels like we're just going through the motions. But Advent holds a special time for us. It's a time for us to look forward to the coming of Jesus. It's also a time for us to look forward to the return of Jesus. So the first two weeks of Advent, we speak about the coming of Christ. His birth. And in the second two weeks of Advent, we talk about the second coming of Christ. His return to take us home. And so we got a lot of things to be joyful for. We have a lot of hope in those kind of things. And that should bring peace to our soul. And that's all done through love. And those are the four tenets of Advent. So today we want to talk about Spending less. How do you make yourself happy during the holiday season? Well, spending less could probably help out quite a bit along that way. So spend less. You know, I like the sound of that. Okay? Not that I'm a cheapskate or anything. But it can bring joy. <laughs> so you have less green going out of the pocket. Which brings a lot less stress into the situation. So when we think of spending and Christmas, we might just kind of focus on buying stuff, you know, just stuff. But I want you to think of the bigger picture when it comes to all of the spending that we do at Christmas time. See, spending less does not mean spending nothing. Rather, we should strive to thoughtfully evaluate what we support with our spending and allow our spending to support products, people, and causes that are worthy of being supported. 
not just buying stuff, but making sure that when we're actually being stewards, good stewards of what the gifts that God has given us, whether it's money or time, talents, whatever it happens to be, that we're spending it in a worthwhile manner and being good stewards of those gifts. So I kind of want you to think about this in the Christmas season when we're talking about spending things. We need to be able to spend less on just stuff. Things that are fleeting, momentary. So I went to Dave Ramsey because we were talking about money and things like that. So I came up with some Christmas tips to save money on gifts from Dave Ramsey. And we know he's that financial guru who loves to help you get out of debt quick. And it's really wonderful. One of these days, we're going to get around to teaching Financial Peace University from Dave Ramsey again. And uh, so once we put that on, that's a very, very worthwhile uh, session to go through. Uh, really helps you refocus what you spend your gifts on, your talents, your time, and especially your money. So the first thing is, Dave says to choose time over money. And we're, we're going to have a little bit more on that here in just a minute. Shop early. Don't wait to the last minute where you're making all these impulse buys at the last very second. Give fewer gifts. Make them more meaningful. It's not quantity, it's quality. And I want you to hang on to that thought as well. And then resist retail marketing. Now that's hard to do because we're just constantly barraged with all these ads. And who do they aim them at? The kids, right? Mm -hmm. So kids can go to mom and dad and go, oh, hey, I want this latest, greatest little toy here. And they don't stop there. They go to the grandparents too. And so, you know, they really kind of pressure you to want to give them that neat little toy that they really saw on TV and looked really cool mm -hmm. as they did on the ads. Some of them this year, though, that I've seen, I haven't figured out what they actually do. <laughs> There's one that you shake, and it's got lights on it, and I'm going, I, I have no idea how that works, and I'm a techie. So, you know. But we're pressured into making decisions to buy the latest stuff out there. So we have to really, really think about what we're going to do. And then Dave says to use old gift cards. Now, you know... There's a stigma around, what do they call that, re-giving or re-gifting. But if you got a bunch of old gift cards, you got to put them to use. Because we, we found gift cards that I got. Uh, we were going through some boxes, and I found this whole stack of gift cards. And I'm going, oh, how old are these anyway? <laughs> of course, they'd all expired. You know, so... You, you had somebody give you the gift, and then you, oh, this is cool. I'll put it off over here. Oh, I've got to watch out for that, don't I? <laughs> I felt the heat on that one. Woo! Uh, get your attention quick. But you put it off to the side, and then that gift goes to waste. And you got to think about that. When you're given a gift, it's not meant to sit on a shelf or in a box. It's meant to be open and enjoyed and savored. Mm -hmm. And see, when we think about the Christmas season, we've got to think about that gift that God gives us. We've got to un unwrap the package. We've got to use that gift that God gives us, mm -hmm. not leave it on the shelf. Then his next point on here is order online early. Okay? Now, if you're a local retailer, that's not good news. You know, as a I own my own business in here, and, and you know, I got to tell you, when they started up with the online stuff in there, it really killed our local businesses in here because what they're doing is they're selling things that are at two and three, maybe sometimes even five percent above cost because they sell in bulk across anywhere. They don't have salespeople, they don't have service techs, they don't have any of the overhead that a local re retailer would have, and so I've kind kind of have a little qualm about the order online early portion of it, but that's what Dave says. So combine your orders together. Talk to less than shipping that way. But the key is, he says, to live by the list. Live by the list. So it's a good start to 
to take a look at this list in here, it's a good start if we're talking money. But there's so much more to it than just money, right? I mean, it's the most wonderful time of the year, or so they say. For some, it's not. It can be a nightmare. It all depends on what our perspectives are and what our focus is on. And that's a key. So the scriptures tell us about the danger of making it all about stuff. And if we go into Matthew 6, 19 through 24, it says, Don't store for treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them, and where thieves break in and steal. You store your treasures in heaven. Where moss and rust cannot destroy and thieves cannot break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. So what this verse tells us is it's not all about the stuff. But I want you to pay particular attention to that last line in there. And it says, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. So I have to ask you a question. If we're so focused on all of the stuff in Christmas and the latest fads and all the stuff that they pump out at you constantly and barrage you with in the ads, if our, if our heart is filled full of stuff there and our mind is full of, full of all that stuff, where did God go? We don't have room for God. If it's filled with all the stuff, we just push God off to the side. And see, that's the problem. If we take a look back at when I was a kid, you know, Christmas had a whole different meaning. And I'm older. I'm not old as some people here. I won't name names. Is he asleep? No, no he's asleep. Um, but really, truly, when we take a look at it, the focus of Christmas has gone away from the reason of, for the season to more of shop, spend, you know, haste, craziness, all those kind of things, and we lost the joy in the season. We lose the hope and the peace that comes from the season and the love that was shared by God for us in the birth of Jesus. We lose all that, and it just comes down to stop. So how can we have a heart for God when it's full of the love of stuff? And there should be more to it than that. And there is. There is. I don't know about you, but the holiday season in my mind is often much more idyllic, you know? More more the, uh, of the concept of what the season is all about. I, I like to take a better look at why we have the season. Why, why do we celebrate this season? more than the frantic, stressful, action-packed month that we actually experience. Anybody else in here ever feel that way? Yeah. Yeah, see, we need to change our focus. Our already hectic schedule gets even crazier, and suddenly on top of everything else, there's presents to buy, cards to send, parties to organize, pageants to attend, menus to plan, cookies to bake, bells to ring, carols to sing, and we lose sight of Christmas in the process of it all. We get caught up in all of the stuff of Christmas instead of the reason for Christmas. The reason for Christmas. And with so much to do and so much to buy and not enough time to get it all done, it's no wonder that the holidays often have most of us feeling stressed rather than feeling blessed. Mm -hmm. How many people get stressed out at Christmas time? Mm -hmm. Most of us. Mm -hmm. How many feel blessed instead? Mm -hmm. Few of us. Mm -hmm. So we need to change our perspective. We need to change that focus away from all of the stuff, away from all of the craziness. It's great to participate in some of it, but don't let it overwhelm you. So I have a question for you. Where are you spending your time on? Stuff or family or the reason for the season. So how do we budget our Christmas? I have Dave Ramsey in there, so now we're going to talk about budget. How do we budget our Christmas? And I'm not talking about money here. I'm talking about time. 
Time's the one thing you can never replace. Money you can replace if you work hard enough, hopefully. But time you can never get back. Once it's gone, it's gone. So I mean really budgeting time for Christmas and then sticking to it. Sticking to it. Is there another way? Is it possible just to carve out enough time to, and purpose to create that joyful, peaceful holiday season that we all really, truly want to have? We long for that. I long for Christmas because I, I, I love the time that we are able to see each other in families or gathered together for caroling in church. So you need to make time for things that are truly worth it, not just the time that's spent on stuff. See, it all takes forethought. We have to think about it ahead of time. We have to plan ahead, and it's often been said that, and you've probably heard me say this at least half a dozen times over the years, that a failure to plan is a plan to fail. Okay? And when it comes to the holidays, truer words can never be spoken. If you don't plan out your holidays, guess what? You're going to be subject to the craziness, to the chaos that ensues. You're going to get caught up in all that stuff and then lose the meaning of the season. You're going to lose your joy in the process. And if you lose your joy, I'm pretty sure there's not much peace hanging around. <laughs> Seriously. So just taking a few minutes early in the season to set a time and money budget, time and money, plan your menu, determine your priorities can make the difference between a memory that will last you a lifetime and a holiday you'd simply like to forget. And haven't we all been there? I know I have. If we just take that time to budget ourselves out properly, budget our time, budget our resources, it's going to make it a much, much happier season, a memorable season, rather than a nightmare. So when we allow Christmas to revolve around possessions and materialistic goods, and what I like to do, and I put this in big, bold, capital letters, wants versus needs, wants versus needs, then we form barriers that come up between our true selves and what God commands us to do, which is to love him above all things and all the stuff. And we lose track of that. We lose sight of that. And, and instead, we make the stuff God for the season. And what happens to God? He gets pushed away. And then we have the nightmare before Christmas. Instead of a beautiful Christmas memory. And see then, if we do all those things, our Advent becomes less about preparing for Jesus and more about the busy schedules and expectations that we're carrying with us. And let's face it, they're hard to meet for the absolute best of us. Those kind of expectations, those kind of schedules, those kind of things are hard to meet for the best of us. Our hearts become dissatisfied and are searching for something that can't be bought in a store. consequence is we lose the meaning of the season. We lose hope and we lose joy. And there's certainly no hope when that happens. So during Advent and really throughout the year, we really need to be you know, cognizant and purposeful in what we focus on. We need to step back and reevaluate what we're doing. And if it makes sense, then let's change it. Let's, let's go out there and make sense of the season. Let's make sense of what we're doing. Take that moment, step back and say, hey, wait, I don't have to be in all this craziness. I've got something much more purposeful, much more meaningful that I can be doing to make this the holiday season that it should be. Holy day season that it should be. So we spend less. Instead of mindlessly shopping and spending more than we, we can afford, we take time to think about those purchases that we actually are making. We resist the empire more that's out there. And we declare that Jesus instead is worthy of our praise 
and that Jesus is the meaning and the prize that we're searching for. Mm -hmm. That's our end game. <coughs> Excuse me. So when we think about that, uh, we need to be able to conserve some of our resources that we would spend on just materialistic gifts, and we can use them to make a bigger impact by giving to someone <coughs> in need or making memories with someone that we love. Those are the things that will last a lifetime. Those are the things that are much more purposeful, much more meaningful for our lives than just going out there and joining in craziness. So I want you to really take a, take a hold of that and, and think about that. It's more than just an invitation to say no to overspending. It's an invitation to a whole new way of celebrating that season. See, this year you have an opportunity. Yes, please, thanks. <clears throat> we have an opportunity uh, to make a whole new way of celebrating this year. You have an opportunity for a fresh start. We don't have to play into everything that's going on. We can make a choice right now. We can pre-decide that our holiday season this year is going to be different. And it's going to be focused. Not on the stuff of the day. Not on a fad that's going to fizzle away. But making memories and being purposeful in what we do during the season. We can start a new tradition of spending compassionately and responsibly. And here's the fact. Christmas is what you make it. Christmas is what you make it. And I really want you to hold on to that thought. It's up on the screen. So, now I want you to shift gears to you a little bit and speak about spending more. How about that? So we talked about 20 minutes worth of how to spend less. But now I want you to shift gears. We're going to talk about spending more. Mark, you got a dichotomy going on here, right? So, yep, I want to spend more. But this time, I want to talk about spending more time and energy on things that will actually bring you joy. Bring hope and peace back into the season. You see, when the busyness of the season overtakes us, and in most cases overwhelms us at some point, then we need to adjust our focus because we're going down the wrong path. So I want you to pre-decide that as you're starting to feel overwhelmed by all the present giving and all the stuff you gotta have to do, stop and just say, hey, wait a minute. Am I letting the season overtake me? Or am I going to refocus and make this a much pleasurable experience? So we need to take about Think about those kind of things and think about the things that really are our stress points that overwhelm us. And then when we see those things coming at us, let's back up and take time to refocus. So in a recent study, it was found, and I shared this at the men's breakfast yesterday, I shared part of this. In a recent study, it was found that most adults over 50 years of age don't really care about getting material things anymore. You know, getting stuff. They don't want more stuff but instead find it much more rewarding to just to have quality time with family and friends instead of all the stuff. And truth be told, I'm one of those people. I don't care if they, if they give me any more stuff. Birthdays, Christmas time, I don't want the stuff. I want the intangibles. I want the memories. I want the family time. I want the time to gather with friends. You know, I don't need just another tool laying around collecting dust or a gadget or whatever it happens to be. I want to spend that quality time with family and friends and I look forward to going caroling with our church family as it brings joy and happiness to those that we are visiting. It's not about us. It's about bringing joy to someone else. Someone that doesn't have the ability to get out and see and get involved in the season. We bring the season to them. And so caroling becomes a blessing. 
And as we're giving those people the blessing, guess what? You're getting blessed at the same time. And it shows that in the midst of the holiday barrage, someone still cares enough to share joy with them. And being a blessing to others, one of the best gifts that you can ever give in the holidays or really truly at any time of the year. Being a blessing. The other thing to consider is, guess what? That's exactly what God wants us to do. He wants us to be that blessing for others. And that is a reason for the season. It's one of them. To be a blessing to others. What does it tell us in the scriptures? It's more blessed to give than to receive. And that's what God is talking about. Being a blessing to others. Giving the gifts. Giving the talents that he has blessed us with. Using those gifts and talents to bless others in the process. And bringing them instant joy. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we've gone caroling here for the last few years and gone into those care centers. You know, you look at the people and they're just kind of sitting in their chairs. Just... Mm -hmm going through the motions day after day and you come in and you start singing those Christmas carols and the guy that's half asleep over in the corner perks up and he starts singing along with you. Now who got the most joy out of that? Him or you? Yeah, both. See, that's what God wants us to do. Serving others is one of the best gifts that we So I want you to go, you know, we're going to go into the Wayback Machine here, trying to remember that little cartoon that that came from. <laughs> Terry probably knows. I can see it so put the little dog in the... Uh, yeah, there was a little dog and something else. Anyway. Oh, Mr. Peabody. Yes. Mr. Peabody. There we go. There yes. we go. Yes. Mr. Peabody. Yeah. The dog. Yeah. So I want you to go in the Wayback Machine. I want you to think about some of your favorite childhood memories from a long time ago. And really think, you know, what are your favorite memories made of? Was it that fad toy that you got as a kid? Or was it something else? Was it the family time? Or gathering together as a youth group and going sledding and then you get to go and you watch that brand new movie that just came out called The Grinch Stole Christmas in 1966. <laughs> All right, so. My dad's favorite. Yeah, you know, I gotta admit, I'm old. So, because <laughs> I was already 10 years old when that movie came out. Memories are some of the best gifts that you can have, and they last a lifetime. Long after that fad toy is gone, guess what? Those memories will last you an eternity. Those toys don't, they break. You know, some of them you. Some kids get so many toys, well, we'll get into that later. <laughs> but those memories, they're gifts that are given to you that will last you a lifetime. I was talking to one of my co-workers in Florida last week. Uh, actually, we were all sitting together at lunch and we were talking about Christmas and this ad came up on TV and I was just going, you know, it was just spend, 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 you know, you know all the different things going on. And so we started talking about Christmas shopping. And the one lady says, yeah, I know I really gotta get on it. I've got all these gifts to buy. I've got all these things. I said, whoa, 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 you know, you're so stressed out over this. And about three of the others were joining in. They were saying the same thing. Because they were super stressed because they hadn't even started Christmas shopping yet. And they had all of these things that they had to do and they had to buy. And I said, you know, what is it? Why do you do this? And they really came to dread this time of year and having to go through and do all that spending and buy all the presents. What if they don't like to give? What if I didn't spend enough to suit someone in the family? Getting judged six ways from Sunday about what you gave. Sound all too familiar, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Gift giving should never be a contest in any family. Because someone is always going to get hurt in the process. Always. So I threw out the idea as we were sitting at the table. What if you didn't make it about the gifts at all? 
What if you made it about the time that you spent together instead? What if everyone just brought one present and y'all played, now I know this sounds bad, Dirty Santa, right? Where you, you, know, you open up your present, they just kind of, everybody gets a name, you draw it, and then you can exchange the gifts, you know, somebody can go steal your gift and everything. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun is had in that time, and you make it a lot more about the fun and the time that you spend together and the joy that that's creating, unless you really lose your present as well. That's just stuff, <laughs> right? But what we want to do is we want to take that focus off of the stuff and make it about the time instead. And you know what? Every one of the pe persons at the table loved it. That's what they were going to do. So they're having their Christmas party for the for Orlando next week. Whoa, let's put up the candle. Uh, they're having their Christmas party next week, and so instead of uh, going and doing what they were going to do, they're they're doing the dirty Santa thing across the entire office. Now we've got about 120 employees in the office, so it's going to be wild. I'm glad I'm in Iowa. <laughs> so. It's not about the stuff so much, but it's about the time. It's about those memories that you're going to make that are going to last the lifetime. So I want to say that, you know, it, it's okay for us to go ahead and do some meaningful gifts for those who are special. That in itself is not a bad thing. It can be very thoughtful and very well received. So I'm not saying don't buy anything from anybody because that's not where this, what this is all about. But when it all comes down to giving kids five and 10 gifts, they lose track of who really gave them any of this stuff to start with. And all they care about is unwrapping it to see what's gonna be in the next one. And then guess what? It, it gets shoved off the side. And it, it's not a memory. So skip the stress and decide ahead of time as a family to limit that hassle. And make it about the family time instead. Make it about the memories. Make it about giving a special gift. <laughs> a special gift. Not about all the stuff. Guess what? You could probably do all your shopping in one day. In a few hours. What happens? All your stress goes down. All the fighting. All the madness of a Black Friday goes away. You don't need to participate. There's no rule that says you have to participate. And instead, focus on the things that bring you and your family joy. Focus on the reasons for the season. The blessings of the gifts that God has given. So I want you to think back about any one really fond memory you had growing up as a child. Was it about the stuff? Or was it about food? Well, I can tell you that I love getting together as family with all of our cousins and grandparents and great grandparents. And, you know, I truly don't remember any one single toy that I got that entire time, but I do. And I can remember that. I can even remember the smells of walking in to the house and, and all of the different things in there. And you, you know, it wasn't about the toy. It wasn't about the stuff. My fondest memories came of that time being together. And see, that's lost on us now for most families out there because culture has changed our priorities. Culture has changed our focus into the empire of more. We don't need the empire of more. We actually need less. So, did you attend church as a family when you were growing up? Yeah? Okay. Do you remember the traditions that you had at church? I do. The dreaded Christmas pageant. <laughs> or choir or play. But afterwards, once you got through that, then what'd you have? You had great food and fun and time together. And boy, I gotta tell you, we really had some really good cooks in our church. You know, I can remember all of the cookies and the rolls and the fudge. Yeah. <laughs> Shows. 
and the time that we spent together singing Christmas carols. See, those are some of my favorite memories. It isn't about stuff. It's not about toys. It's about time and love. Because you were showing a lot of love at that time. So, do you remember your time? Can you smell the smells? And remember the time that you were gathered together? No toys, no gifts, no stress. See, we celebrated the gifts of God. We celebrated the birth of Jesus. The only eternal gift that could ever be given. The only eternal gift that could be given. That's the reason for the season. So after we leave church today, what are your thoughts? What can you do about making it more about the reason for the season? Making it more about... The gifts of God's one and only Son to bring us eternal joy, eternal hope, eternal peace, eternal love. Gifts and friend. <clears throat> gifts that are not fleeting. See, it's all a matter of choice. What do you want your life to be like? Do you want to be about strength? Gracious God and Heavenly Father, thank you for what you have given us. Thank you for the blessings that you give us each and every day. Thank you for the eternal peace, the eternal joy, the eternal hope, and the eternal love that can only be found in your Son, Jesus. Our Savior, our salvation, to bring us out of the stuff of the world and bring us into your presence for eternity. Because of that love, because of that peace, because of that joy that can only be found in you. Help us to refocus back on you this season. Help us to bring you back into the center and flush away all of the stuff of the day. In your precious and holy name we pray today. Amen. Thanks for the flood of memories. <laughs> I only really, I remember three to, three gifts. Two of them are because of a picture, and one of them is because of the way I acted. <laughs> the one you would appreciate, my brother and I got matching Vikings robes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Same year, we got boxing gloves. <laughs> so we boxed in the, in the robes. <laughs> the other one was a metal tractor, Ertl. About yay big. Is that my aunt and uncle and I pitched? Oh, shit. Because I already had one. <laughs> I didn't need another one. I pitched big. Not knowing that 45 years later that I would get the one in the box that I never opened to my grandson. Mm -hmm. God has a way of taking you and, and making you think, oh, wow. That, that I had, I expected hope, <laughs> you know, as we think about heaven, expecting hope and there was no peace in that room <laughs> after that gift was given. Wow, what a change. Now I just relish the time that I have with uh, my mother-in-law and my dad since they've been so close to us now. But we have this hope and we have this joy that we get from this season we have this hope, and we have this joy from this time that we come together in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, you all may have noticed that the little cups disappeared. We have reached a point where we can return to doing communion in a, in a fashion that we truly feel is much more meaningful and uh, 
it's partaking of the bread and, and the cup as we do this. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he did take the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. Think of the hope, the joy, the peace, and the love that comes along with that. In the same way, towards the end of the meal, he took the cup and after filling it, said, this is my blood shed for many. Take and drink. And we are told as often as we do this, we are to do so until Christ returns. And it's kind of like spring. Every day we're one day closer. Every day we are one day closer to having this meal with our Lord and Savior Jesus. each of you to come up to and take this meal with us, the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Please join me. I believe it's been nearly three years since we've been able to share communion that way. Mm -hmm. What a blessing mm -hmm. to be able to do that again. Father, as we sit and think about the reason for this meal and, and the gift that you gave us, uh, Mark was talking about giving and spending less, and, and then he talked about spending more when we need to spend less time on the ways of the world and spend more time with God. And this is the way that we can do that. God gave us, that, and that single gift, yeah, that's the gift that leave, gets left unopened too often. Father, as, as we close out this time of, of communion, God, we thank you that we are able to do this, that we can come together as a body of Christ and celebrate the Lord's Supper with you. Uh, there are too many countries around the world, and, and many of those that have been majority Christian, they are losing that, that they are becoming the, they're becoming the minority in those countries. And their ability to share in this meal may soon disappear other than behind closed doors. All too many countries, that's already the case, Father. Father, we pray for repentance of your people, and a revival. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good morning. time for prayers for the people. So if anybody has any prayer requests, um, we'd like to pray for them this morning. Anybody else? Oh, yes. I'd like to add my wife.
Absolutely. It's not until they get sick that long. Well, well I mean, she's she's gotten better and gotten, you know, mm -hmm. it seems to be something she's dealing with. Like, 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 like they're yeah. calling it long COVID, I guess, or something. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Is there anybody else this morning? This morning I would just like to start with John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And John 3:21, whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Thank you, Father God, for sending us your Son to die on the cross to take away the sins of the world, that we can have a personal relationship with you that will guide us through this life if we accept your free gift. You are always with us, fighting for us in the heavenly and earthly realms. You give us freedom and break the chains that bind our hearts and minds. You keep us... Our chains that bind our hearts and minds in bondage and you make a way where there seems to be no way you clear paths in the darkness for us to follow your light that gives hope and joy in times of sorrow and sadness you are an ever-present God who will never leave us or forsake us father God I lift up Larry McDonald to you today he left a prayer request by phone a couple weeks ago Father God, he is reaching out to you. Please let your Holy Spirit rest upon him and give him peace and comfort today. And, and uh, always I ask that you clear his mind and heart of any animosity or anxiety that would keep him from you. Give him clarity of mind, heart, and soul as he continues on the path you have laid out for him. And we thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing and going to do in his life. Father God, I pray for Jeremiah. I pray that you will just um, fill him with the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Come into his heart and mind. Release the anxious thoughts that he has all the time, Lord Jesus. Help him to know he's a child of God. And they're just, um, as a child of God, we have acceptance, Lord Jesus, through you and through your life on this earth. So just be with him and calm him each and every day and help him to follow you, Jesus. Father, I pray for um, Rachel, who has long-lasting COVID. I pray for healing of her lungs, healing of her body, and uh, healing of, of anything that would come against her, Lord Jesus. I just pray that you will be with her and comfort her through this time, and her husband and children as well. And um, the Christian people in their path, Father God, that um, they can always have your presence known to them, Lord Jesus. I pray for um, Keith and Jane Beresford, Lord. I pray for comfort and strength be with Keith in his final hours that he will feel your presence with him, guiding him into your peace and rest. I pray that Jenna made it home in time to be with her family and um, to comfort them as well. And Father God, I pray for Larry Kelly, who passed away this last week, and his wife. I pray for his wife, Clara. Lord God, just comfort her heart. Oh, there is so much death in this world, Lord Jesus, but we have the promise in you, Jesus. We know that you are there for us and that there is a life after death, Lord God. So just help them to open their minds and hearts to you, Father God, and just help them to remember 
that you are the one that gives them peace and you will guide them through this time and you will always be with them. And we thank you, God, for the house that you have supplied for Becky and her family. May your presence be always with them. I lift up Richard's mom who has pneumonia and other issues and Father God, you know her needs. Please meet her right where she is and strengthen her and guide her through this trying time. Let your will be done with her, in Jesus' name. And loving God, I just thank you for always being there, guiding us through the dark times in our lives. You give hope, joy, and peace to those who believe in you and are called by your name. Open the eyes of those that need to see you and the ears of those that need to hear your word. Place a fire in people's hearts to find you. Wake up the world once again to follow you and acknowledge you in all things, great and small. Bring people back to worshiping you together. Let us raise our voices to honor you, O God, for we need you. We are lost without you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us so unconditionally. You are faithful in all things. In Jesus' name. I always look forward to your prayer time because it, it really is truly a blessing. So thank you. That is a gift. So Lord, we we uh, as we come into this time um, that we are closing out our online portion of our service in here, we get to look forward to some joyous music in here. Um, yes, that was a pun. So yes, we will be singing all about joy. But I want us to just take away from this today that we don't have to submit to the world and the culture, that we can turn back to God, make room for him in our lives. In this, his season, the celebration of Christ, and that's where Christmas comes from, is that celebration of Christ, his coming, and his coming again. And so we look forward to that. So as we close out this time we just praise you and thank you for being with us today and we praise God in all things that we do gracious Heavenly Father thank you that you make all things new that you give us these opportunities to change our lives to change our direction that you give us victory and power in your name that you hold the keys over death and that by your might Jesus was raised from the grave and that he will be coming back for us so that we might join with you in heaven. And Lord, we thank you that you have a plan for us and that you made a way for us to join with you in eternity through your son, Jesus. We confess our need for you today to refresh us and make us new again, to remove us from the world and bring us back into your presence. We ask that you would renew our hearts and our minds and our lives for the days ahead. We pray for your redemption for us. Keep your words of truth planted firmly within us. Help us to keep focused on what is pure and what is right. Give us the power to be obedient to your word. And Lord, when the enemy attacks us and, and drags us away from you, Lord, we know that you are more powerful than anything that he can do. And we trust that your voice would speak louder and stronger, reminding us that we are safe with you and your purposes and plans for us will not fail. We ask that you be our defense and our guard, keeping our way clear and removing the obstacles that would keep us from you, covering all of our pitfalls, Lord. Lead us onto your level ground. Shine your light in us and through us and let us be a light to our world so that others can see you shining through us. May we make a difference in this world for your glory and your purposes. Mm -hmm. Set your way before us. May all your plans succeed. And may we reflect your peace and hope and joy to a world that so desperately needs your presence and your healing. 
Thanks be to you, God, for your indescribable gift, that eternal love, eternal hope, eternal joy, and eternal peace through your Son, Jesus. To you be the honor and glory this day.